evening everyone it's Christine here and I'm back to share my progress on Roxy Journal of Stitchery down the garden path this is the third prompt of a vegetable garden or a scarecrow and I've gone with the prompt of the vegetable garden and I've taken as my inspiration Chateau de Villandry in France and you can see in my part one of this um, series of videos I've shared photos from when I visited there as well as the surrounding countryside so we're working um, as you would have seen in my past videos on a base comprised of a piece of fabric on which I have transferred across a inkjet print so it has also a thin layer of um, paper but the paper with the process that I use for transferring which is the fabric Mod Podge takes on a fabric consistency which is fantastic and the great thing I'm finding as I stitch is it's not um, puckering up. It's got a nice sort of yeah, weightiness that's keeping it really nice and flat, even where I have done some quite intense stitching. So together we had done um, some work on the, the pumpkins, which are in two beds down the bottom. We've then got cauliflower, broccoli and Romanesco. We've got two types of cabbages. We've got strawberries. And since the last video, I've done work to add a patch of carrots. So I'll just bring it up a little bit closer. So I've got little orange beads that I've put a couple of stitches through. Oh, that carrot got caught. The top of the carrot has been caught by the stitch. I don't know how that happened. There we go. Maybe the bead's been moving around. I have to give it a little bit of a zhuzhu. Um, and so I've got little bead carrots, um, which are like the, they call them Paris market carrots, I think, and they're little round carrots, or it could be the tops of carrots that are sticking out of the ground. And then I've got little green tufts that I've bought through. So at least three, some of them have actually ended up with more than three. And because I've been stitching over the surface, they've probably ended up a bit roughed around. So I probably do need to straighten, straighten a few of them up. Hopefully I'm not too close there. So I've got a whole bed of those and I just did those over a base of some ribbon that I attached. So I used this ribbon that I just cut down um, thinner so that it was the width of the bed. Um, and then I actually just used a bit of Yoohoo glue to stick it down briefly while I then put some, um, just some running sort of stitches along just to tack it, tack it down in place as a permanent tack, not a tack that I'm gonna take out. So that's what I've done in that bed and tonight we'll finish um, adding our beetroot bed. So again I'll bring it up so you can have a, never know if when I bring it up it actually gets properly into focus, maybe I just need to give it a tap. Um, so little beetroots, I thought they were the perfect colour for beetroots, they've got a little bit of brown and that sort of deep um, burgundy sort of colour with a bit of a sheen and then I've done a double French knot um, to make the little sort of leaves of them and anchored that into the into the base. Um, I've also added a tree and we can do another um, tree together ourselves. So I've mounted, made that sort of come um, out from the bed. I've sort of layered beads on top of each other to give it a bit of dimension and just done a little trunk for the tree. And We'll do some more of this together. I've done what I think probably fits the description of, of stump work and I've created this stand-up rhubarb or Swiss chard. I haven't decided which it is actually. Let me know which you think it most looks like. Um, but it could be the, yeah, the red Swiss chard or the uh, rhubarb, both of which can actually grow quite large. So I'm not too worried about the, the sizing of that. That's a, yeah, a monstrous growth of rhubarb or Swiss chard. And I've done that with um, using some wire and repurposing something that you probably have in your kitchen cupboards and might not actually be using at the moment. So I love a good repurpose. So we'll definitely get to that. So I've got some beads out here that I thought we might use um, for some of the trees and some of the other bits and pieces. And we'll definitely um, kick off probably with getting the rest of our um, little beetroots down. And I can show you how I've just done that double or that double twist French knot. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day. It's Friday here, if I haven't already said that. I had a few bloopers as I started off my videos tonight, so I've turned it off, I think, twice and just, yeah, deleted because I just, for some reason, couldn't get the words out. Some days are just like that. So let's try and stay on camera as well, which is always 
degree of difficulty and let's pop up so I've just um, put a knot on the end of this strand of variegated pearl cotton and we're just going to pop up at a sort of a diagonal point across from where the other little bead is go around to the back and then we just need to pick up our little beetroot oops beetroot beads now I've popped the beads down on my surface which hopefully you can see down here because I find it much easier to pick them up when they're on a surface like that as well as Travis's magic Labrador dust okay let's check we're in camera so I'm just going to do one wrap around the needle two wraps around the needle and then I'm just going to put the needle back down just behind where the bead is so we're not going back through the bead in this one we're just going to put the little stitch in um, and hold it to the the surface and that gives us a nice little bobbly leaf behind it so we'll do another one of those sorry if I'm wiggling this all around so we're popping up We're going to pick up a, oops, we want to pick up these ones. I've actually got two different colours of beads here. One I thought could be for a plum tree. But I want to make sure I'm getting my um, beetroot coloured ones, which are these 03003 Mill Hill beads, in case you're looking for them. I actually got these as a, um, a set of used, well not used beads, but from um, a bulk lot I got on Facebook Marketplace from someone's collection. So I don't actually know how old the beads actually are and whether you can still buy them. But it was just great to get a huge collection of different types of beads to be able to, um, yeah, use in my sewing and not at all at a high cost, which is always nice to get a bargain at the same time. Because you often find people have a hobby and then they decide to, to move on from that hobby and they're getting rid of their stuff and so you can get yourself a nice a nice bargain and a nice variety particularly for this sort of work where you're not needing a particular exact color you just want a good diversity of colors that you can you can draw from so I haven't gone out and bought anything for this um, it's really just using what I have so two wraps and then just popping the needle down behind it pulling the needle through oops catching always the problem once you get beads on um, you might find that your thread actually will progressively catch on it so just be wary of that okay let's pick up another one of our beetroot beads oops that one just jumped where did it jump Okay, and two little wraps and then pop the needle down behind it while I hold on to it so that those little French knots um, stay in place and then pull the thread through and the little French knots anchor behind it like a little leaf. Now this might be my last one because there's another tree that we actually need to add in there. I'm going to follow where the where the trees were on the original photo although I did reverse the photo when I did the transfer I didn't do the pre-reversing so it has actually yeah reversed the way that the photo went but that's okay there we go so I reckon that will be enough for our little little beetroots There. Little dog barking across the road. I wonder what it's barking at. I don't know if you can hear it. Okay, so I've managed to move. That's the only problem with having your beads on there. You can move them around if you're moving your piece around a little bit. And I've got a needle here as well for beading. So I might pop that one back into my pin cushion so I reckon we might um, show you not we me I might I might show you how I did my little rhubarb or Swiss chart because that's kind of fun
Now, what I'm using is these little ties that you get in bags of plastic, like freezer bags. So they are ties that are bendy and you normally put them around the bag, except we never use ours because when we're using a plastic bag, we're usually probably tying the bag closed itself or maybe just slipping it over and folding it over. So it's actually rare that we make use of these. So we actually have a whole lot of these in our cupboard. And I was in the cupboard the other day and I thought, oh, maybe I can use the wire, which is very flexible um, as part of my stitching. So I had a play and I'm kind of happy with it. And so I figured I would share it with you. Now I did have some threads up. Ah, there are my threads. I was thinking, where have they gone? And they're hiding under my work. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're going to, first of all, just trim off on the side of the wire. Now you could still use it with that plastic um, fully attached and just sort of, yeah, with the wrapping that we're gonna do, you could just wrap around it. But I thought, no, nah, I'll take it off just to make it a little bit more a sort of a central central spine rather than a spine with little flappy bits on the side. But again, you could probably do it without taking, taking the bits off. So I'll put my wrappy bits aside. So again, I'll try and stay on camera. What I'm going to do is at the end of one of these um, is I'm gonna create a little leaf hook shape. Now hopefully you can see that. Let me just tap, tap it and hopefully it will focus. So we've got a little leafy shape there and we're going to do another little leafy shape at the at the other end like that and then we're going to create a little middle section which I might make a smidge longer and then something like that so hopefully the two edges will be the two side bits will be about the same and this little middle one and then with the middle one I'm just going to try and create a little leafy shape at the top of that one as well so that's what we've got now I could just pop it on my hand in case you couldn't see it when it was in there so you've got a little leaf bent around coming up the middle creating another little leaf coming back down and then coming up to the other side and creating a little leaf. So let's get our red, our rhubarb red. I think I'm going to call it rhubarb, I think. I think rhubarb leaves can be a little bit bigger, but for the purpose of this, these can be some baby, baby rhubarb leaves. So what I might do is I might start by just putting a knot, which will end up being covered anyway. I'll just tie a knot around the top bit, even though that bit isn't ultimately going to be red. We'll be covering it with green anyway. I'm just going to get a secure anchoring point. Okay, and let's just chop off the little bit that we don't need. And then we can just start the process of wrapping. I can actually just bend these other bits out of the way for now because I just want to wrap this central. So you can see I'm just wrapping the thread, a single strand of embroidery floss around the piece of wire covered with plastic so you don't get any of those pointy nasty bits that might hurt your fingers and I'm just going to go back up again and just make sure that there's no white poking through and we'll travel back down and then we'll keep going on our little winding winding journey very meditative again like so much of this this slow stitching you can just kind of get a bit bit lost in the the process. Try not to forget what you're doing though. You might otherwise end up with a rhubarb with the green stems and red leaves. You can get rhubarbs that are more um, sort of, yeah, they do tend to produce more of the greens, but we've always found the red, the ones that produce the ruby red, they're the tastiest rhubarb. 
actually got to check on the rhubarb in my garden because it can get a bit dry in summer and I must admit lately I've been a bit remiss with getting water out to the garden and it sort of cumulatively dries up with these hotter days even though we haven't had super hot days um, it is a cumulative process oops what did I just do there trying to make sure I don't go off camera and trying not to tangle with the other bits it's hard with fiddly things like this to work out where best to put your fingers for the the purpose of the camera it's a lot easier when you're just doing it doing it yourself but that's okay I was kind of excited to share this with um, the folks because it's repurposing something and it might give you some ideas for your own stitch tree because you could use it for tree trunks for little trellises um, all sorts of things that you might want to have standing out from your piece um, even like stems for flowers if you were doing some sort of three-dimensional flower Hopefully I'm not hypnotising anyone with the, the wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. I did hear someone saying that they put YouTube videos on to, to go to sleep and I must admit when I was watching it I was thinking, hmm, I hope it's not mine that puts them to sleep. <laughs> oh well, at least it's serving a purpose, hey. I find if I've got anything like that going, I can't, I definitely can't sleep. I need to have, yeah, I'm a total silence aficionado. So I wear earplugs every night because it puts me into that beautiful, beautiful silent zone. Okay, now we're near the end. I'm just going to hold it where I've been wrapping it. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to grab this needle from over here. And I'm just going to thread um, my needle, hopefully. It's hard when you're holding holding one part of it. You just have to put a little bit of moisture onto it. I'm trying to thread it the way that I don't normally. Yep, there we go. Okay. Because what I now want to do is just um, anchor. anchor the thread so it doesn't unwind itself. So I'm just going to catch a little bit of the thread that's already there and just going to start passing my needle through just to, to anchor and I'll just put a few little knots on the surface but you won't be able to see them. I might even do it right up where we're going to be winding the green anyway because even if you could then see it's going to get um, covered up by our green. Well, that's come undone but that's fine I'll just do one final knot here as well so that didn't take too long I don't think in fact I can just cut it off a bit closer there we go that can go in my orts collection orts um, for loose threads um, there's a few theories about what orts stand for it might be ought to use or other there's another something something thread ORT but yeah the ORT star with all the little three three scraps so there's the um, base of our little rhubarb and now we need to get some of our friendly green what I might do this time might actually thread. Well, I don't need to thread the needle. Have I left these so I can open them? Yeah, so it's helpful if you can leave your little um, leaves so that you can open them because then you can tie a knot, slip it in, tie a knot, double up the knot just so that it stays. little end now and then I'm going to do a few knots around while I've got the little leaf shape open because I want to just cover the top 
the top of that leaf because it's going to be easier to cover that now before we then start wrapping around. So you just want to cover that upper area of the leaf, although I don't think I'm actually catching. So we'll just get a few more wines there. Oops, come on. Goodness, goodness gracious me. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to hold that tight while I just twist it into a little leafy shape. And now we're going to wrap ourselves, not wrap ourselves, wrap our thread around the leaf. Because I want to add a bit of um, weight to it, I'm actually going to do a decent amount of, of wrapping around. So I want the leaf to be bigger than the bigger than the stem. If you want a leaf shape, you just um, put a bit more depth in the, a bit more of the winding in the middle, which will give you a sort of a thicker, thicker middle. And then up the top and up the bottom, you do less, less winds. Um, and that way it gives you that sort of leafy, leafy shape. And then you can always give it a bit of a flattening with your finger just to get that even better, better leaf shape. So again, I'm just going to thread my little needle with that thread. those last few rounds and then I'm also there's a little loose um, bit up the top so I reckon I'll just put a little stitch in down where we are come up through the top you'll find you'll be able to come up through this one because it's actually I guess hollow in the middle while it's got that little loopy bit that will make it easier to stitch through and then I'm just going to put some stitches through to just try and make sure it all holds together nicely Another one back, and then I might just do a couple of little, little knotty bits. Do another little knot there. So it's been so lovely to see all the different vegetable patches and scarecrows in the Facebook group as well as those of you who are, are working on here. I'm looking forward to catching up on some more of the, hopefully there's some more videos for me to watch from others doing um, this pro project tonight. Once I've finished my own um, video, I'll pop a video on and stitch away. A little bit of thread to get rid of. And how are we going for time? Wow, 23 minutes. How can it happen that we've already had 23 minutes together anyway um let's quickly 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 get this bit done so we're just gonna as we did before just push our little bit of wire out tie a little knot oh the knot wants to tie right down the bottom not to worry about that, that will be okay still. I can pull it up, pull the knot up to the, the middle of the little leafy shape. Just going to trim that off there. Put that out of the way. And then I'm just going to do the same thing of just doing some wraps around the top of what will be the, like the top of the leaf because it's harder to wrap that when you fold the leaf back over. So it's easier to get those little wraps done first at the top, like I've done there. And then you can fold your little bit of, um, push your little loop of wire down and then you can start doing the um, bits, the wraps around the leaf itself. Just unwound it so that it's okay. 
I only partially unwound it, so. Almost wrapped my two leaves together. Don't need co join leaves, I'll just bend those other bits out of the way. The great thing with this wire I've found is it doesn't kind of get that fragility when you're bending it a lot. It just seems to be great. A great wire, really flexible and good to work with. So I'll definitely be keeping some of those in my little stash. actually got a little holiday planned in the near future so I've got to seriously think about what pieces of fabric and other bits and pieces I take with me because we'll be getting a new prompt just as we arrive on holiday and we'll be away for a chunk of time and so I'll be needing to work on the new prompt but I won't know what the prompt is going to be. So I'll have to take a variety of different different things that I can use as my inspiration. Because I am trying not to not to go to the shops. I have brought some goodies from Melanie from Purveyor of Reclaimed Fabrics. Hopefully I got her name right that time. Um, so yeah, I will have some new vintage goodies coming my way repurposed again okay we're just putting a few little stitches through to hold that and I'll just put some little mini knots in as well and I've unthreaded my needle again but maybe I can just get by with with one knot I think that should be fine I think it should definitely hold probably should actually no better do it because I don't really want it to unravel once I've sewn it onto my piece don't be lazy Christine just put another knot in So there we go, that's two, two little leaves done. One more to go, let's do it. We won't, we won't stop halfway through and not show you the finished product. And again, I have lost where my, where my thread is. We haven't used that, so that's not the thread. Where has my thread gone? Has my thread fallen on the ground? Is my thread stuck to the back of my piece? No, I just managed to put <laughs> that. I wish I could ask you where my thread has gone. Surely I didn't I didn't use all of it up. Oh, there we go. It's on the piece. I was like, I'm sure I haven't used it all up, but it has become all rubbly and I've only got one more bit left, which is perfect. Okay, so we're gonna hopefully this or is this one a bit more closed? In which case we'll just pass it. In fact I might put it on the needle then. Because I'm gonna need to use the needle because the loop has been closed by the winding of the red and so I'm going to need to pass use my needle to pass it through the, the loop and then tie a knot again for my for my thread what am I doing could I be any more clumsy tonight truly I'm sure I could be actually I can be impressively clumsy when I put my mind to it or even when I don't. My unique superpower. What's your unique sewing superpower? Possibly tongue in cheek. I'm also very good at, um, lately I've been breaking my fair share of needles, probably when I'm doing the beading and trying to pass multiple threads up through the beads the beads don't always love that so here rather than doing the winding by hand I'm just using the needle to get those um, little loops on so you might even find that's easier and then you can keep your little leaf loop closed while you do it so this one just trying to come off there I 
I just want to get a few over the top including where I've got that little bit of red poking out because as I said we're going to be putting green over the top because we don't want the red showing so I definitely need to get the green thread to go over that at some point here So I want to thank um, those of you who have commented with ideas for what to put in the garden. I'm sure the rhubarb idea came um, from someone's fabulous nomination on my previous video. And then I got, yeah, olives, which I'm thinking one of the trees I'm going to do will be an olive tree. Um, I think someone gave me lemons as well. And so, yeah, I'm thinking a lemon tree and I've got an apple tree. And yeah, got lots of other great suggestions like kale. So that's another good autumn sort of winter winter veg because that's what I think this um, the veggies that I'm putting in are in that season. Not so much a summer garden, so it's not having the tomatoes, for example. I've seen lots of great tomatoes and tomato trellises in the other um, in the Facebook group. Lovely, lovely work. amazing how many people just sort of yeah finish their pieces so quickly I must admit I kind of like to just stage mine out over the course of the um, the two-week period because this is the main um, stitchery project I'm doing at the moment and I like to just yeah take it a bit easier and enjoy enjoy the process for myself I'm sure for those that are finishing it quicker they're enjoying their process too um, everyone has their has their own pace, but I worry a bit that if I finished early, then I might kind of get a bit, a bit bored at a bit of a loose end, and then I might actually have to do something like house chores or something. Perish the thought. Don't want to do those house chores. Got a bit of a scratchy one. I don't think it's even a scratchy throat tonight. You know when you feel like you've got something stuck in your throat? I don't. I had a look. Not like our naughty boy Travis, who I bought back from the park the other day. And at the park I'd noticed normally he picks up some little bits of cooch grass and has a little munch on those. He quite he's quite a connoisseur sir of um cooch cooch grass. But I looked around and he was sort of munching in a way that he doesn't normally munch the cooch grass and I thought at the time, oh that's a bit that's a bit odd. That's a bit strange. Anyway, I got home and he's lying on the floor. And it's a hot day and so he often does lie on the floor and I thought I'll get him some ice blocks from the fridge which normally he loves he'll just sort of munch them munch them down and enjoy them so I put them down in front of him when he's lying on the floor and he just looked at them and I thought well that's strange so I put one near his mouth he went to put it in his mouth but then just yeah dropped it out of his mouth and I saw it thought this is really strange a Labrador that doesn't eat what he's given um, is a Labrador that has some some issues so I said to my partner, I said, I think there's something wrong with him. I think there's something wrong with his mouth. And he's like, no, no, he's fine. He's just, just hot, just tired. I was like, no, nope. gut instinct. I know there's something, something not quite right. So I tried to get Travis's little mouth open, but he's holding it closed, kind of just going, no, nope, don't want to open up my mouth. So Alex came and with his bigger hands, um, yeah, got it, got it open gently and holding it open. And we look inside and there is a massive green branchy, thing between the lower area of his mouth up into the top area of his mouth not piercing the the skin or the the jaw or anything but essentially sort of keeping it um prized prized open um poor little pup so we immediately reached in and grabbed got it out thankfully without any major difficulties it was just something that he obviously couldn't move himself and couldn't and it was just in that mouth area so it wasn't like down the throat or anything um, but that explained why he didn't want to put anything else in his mouth at that point because he'd had some issues with what he'd put in his mouth first up. So very glad that um, worked out that something was wrong and it is a sign um, that you just should trust your gut instinct when it comes to, comes to your pets or your own health for that matter. Big believer. If you think something's wrong, it's probably worth going and getting it, getting it investigated. Not that I've been particularly good. I don't even have a, a regular GP anymore. Our, my favorite GP, my childhood GP, retired. So that's a bit sad. So 
Gotta find a new GP. So, can you see that? Hopefully you can. So this is our little rhubarb. Very cute. So I reckon we will probably, we can do that now actually. I've got a piece of red over there. We can just sew that down in our little garden. I think that will go nice as a little clump. Will I put it behind or in front? Maybe I'll put it behind actually. It's going to sit nicely there, I reckon. I like that. Okay. All right. I love it when I get through my little loose bits of thread. It's good. Okay, doing the knot. Pulling the knot down to the end of the thread. Pulling out the needle. Way to go. Okay, so just going to bring my needle up through. Oops, maybe I'll move it out of the way while I do that. Get my needle, my thread up where I want it. And then I'm just going to bring the thread over and just use it to sort of stitch it down at the base. So I'm just catching one bottom section and then I'll pop up again and catch another bottom section. Just trying to catch up, um, not catch up, pop up as close to where the little base of the, um, I was going to say broccoli. No, it's not broccoli, rhubarb. Rhubarb or chard is, and let's not get it caught around our little friend over there. And then well let's just put one down like that hope you're not getting too much shadow from my lights but it's getting darker outside now so I kind of do need them on it's amazing how the, the time passes and the sky darkens as you're stitching away talking away talking to my stitch buddies Saw that Susanna's planning a bit of a retreat here in Victoria. Um, so that would be one to watch for. I think she's going to release details in a while. I'm not sure whether I'll be able to make it because I've actually booked most of our holidays and my leave um, for this year. But even if I might, can't make it for the whole retreat, I might try and catch up if some um, of the stitching ladies come from, from interstate. See how we go. Okay, so I'm pretty happy that that's um, sitting nice and compact. And let me actually, I'll just tie it off so I can show you kind of something cool. And I've noticed one of the little threads on top of the green has become a little bit loose. So I'll probably have to go back to that after the video finishes and just tighten that one up. And I made myself a little loop at the back, but that's okay. And we'll just stitch that under so it's not sitting as a loose, annoying, annoying loop. A look at that. That's our beautiful rhubarb or Swiss chard. We've got a beautiful little, oops, am I even showing you where it is? I don't know. I can't see now because I'm, yeah. So you've got beautiful little bendy, flexible bits that you can move around depending where you, where you want it. Very cool. Very happy with that. Bit of fun. I just want lots of different things that um, we can enjoy in the garden. Okay, let's do a tree, I reckon. Let's get rid of this. Well, not get rid of it. Let's put this needle over in our needle pin cushion. Pin cushion, needle cushion. Um, so we've got a tree in our design here, a tree there, and a tree there. So I thought maybe a lemon tree, a plum tree, a olive tree. In fact, that's all we need, a lemon, a plum, and olive. So I reckon maybe a lemon tree in the middle. Maybe an olive tree and then a plum tree. 
yeah let's do that so let's do a lemon tree maybe that will be enough that we do together I'm thinking I might and hopefully you can still see I might use these green beads I got them as a mass um, bag of beads from an op shop for probably 50 cents or something they're nice um, even though they don't look that they look a bit dull in the bag they're actually really nice luminous beads I use them few, for a few of my flags that I made last year as part of um, Anne Han made 52 flags okay let's stop talking well no I won't stop talking I just need to focus a little bit more I think I've got the flighty Friday night brain Ooh. Yeah, I might use that cover probably it's a little bit lighter than maybe a lemon tree green I'm not sure let's get rid of that loose thread there's the end let's just drop, drop a bit of that off little length so I leave the trunk to do until after you could do it first but I'm just going to leave it till after to do and again keep tying the knot just putting the piece of thread across my finger with the needle on the top and then wrapping the thread around the needle and then just holding on to that little wrapped area and sliding it down the thread till I get to the bottom. And that's um, one way to create your knot and get it right at the bottom without having to do a whole lot of little wraps and ties at the bottom itself. So I said lemon tree, didn't I, in the middle? Was that what I decided? I think it was. I guess it's what I'm gonna do now. So I thought it was interesting in the photos, I was looking and the trees aren't all in exactly the same sort of symmetrical spot over here because there's one out of this garden bed, one out of that, one out of this one here and then there's one down here. So I'm going to stay true to that. Now I'm going to need to get my green beads and in fact I didn't need to do the beetroots where I did them because we're actually going to be now stitching over with these green beads but that's okay. I'll just leave them underneath and they'll help with giving me a bit of bulk now I might need to move my I just bend my rhubarb down out of the way and I'm just going to do a single um, because I don't mind if the beads are all in different directions so I'm not trying to do multiple stitches to get them to sit in a particular um, direction which you might do if you do sort of two passes through the bead then you will get something that holds it more where you want it to be sometimes but for this I'm actually going to be doing a bit of layering up gorgeous colour in the sky tonight it's turned a I can see sort of a peachy colour into a dusky sort of orangey pink this is my favourite spot in the house this particular room so I use it both as my home working spot as well as as my craft room so dual purpose so at the end of the day the laptop gets shut down and the craft table becomes the, the focus. So I've got a desk that all my worky stuff goes on. Although I'm pretty much paper free these days. So I use the online tools, do a fair bit of agile, agile working, also facilitating agile at my work. My craft desk is my favourite place. If you've had any sort of yeah frustrating or exhausting or exasperating or any sort of day, if you come to your, your craft desk and pick up the needle and pick up some threads, I'm pretty sure it will make you feel better straight away. I'm um, luckily I don't often have exasperating or frustrating days. I suppose we all have those moments though, don't we? Any job would have those in them. But then you do kind of have to reflect on everything that's happening in the world, seeing that horrible 
horrible earthquake and yeah we have so so much to be be grateful for and just yeah do whatever we can to help those those people that are without without homes without any possessions sometimes in really ravaged already ravaged um, countries just hope they keep finding finding survivors as they have been so many days after the the quake the frightening things earthquakes I haven't been in a, a super huge one but when I was traveling in Turkey years ago um, we, we, I was in a, a room with a friend um, and I'd already hopped into bed and she was up up and about sort of doing something over at the, the table and um, I suddenly sort of I was in that half half asleep stage and I suddenly exclaimed Emma would you stop rattling rattling the room and she goes I'm not rattling the room Christine <laughs> And it turned out, um, yeah, there was an earthquake and where the whole hotel was um, was being being rocked. But that wasn't even an earthquake that was particularly close um, to where we were. But they evacuated us all out of the um, out of the hotel, which I don't even know if they're meant to do. I always sort of thought, um, yeah, I don't know. Like in over here, they say shelter like under a, a table or in a, a doorway or something, because if you go outside and then everything's coming down, that can be that can be dangerous as well. Um, so yeah, that was probably my strongest earthquake I've been in, but thankfully, yeah, we were far, far from the, from the epicenter of that one. But yeah, I know there's parts of Italy that are particularly susceptible. On our last trip to Italy, well before COVID times, um, yeah, we visited Teramo, um, stayed in a lovely little bed and breakfast, and yeah, the hosts there, they'd had a yeah a bad bad earthquake there, had to do major major restoration. So I've just built up my tree. Hopefully you can can see it. Um, so it's sort of layered layered up. So it's poking poking out a bit because it's going to kind of have to yeah, have some texture in the distance um, from this one. Now I'm going to add some of my lemons. Let's just have a look whether I think I need to change my thread. I reckon that might be okay still with the green because it's a lighty green so I don't think that will throw too much colour through to the, the lemons. I'm now just going to pop some little pop up through it again still so just popping up amongst the beads and then I'm just going to get some little yellowy beads showing on the, the surface of the tree and we'll see how it looks yeah there's not a huge amount of contrast actually between the the greeny the greeny and the yellow but that's fine you will see the, the pops of them I suppose these trees they're not full on huge trees they're more those little shrubby sort of um, not a spelliot I love where they do a spellier fruit trees and have them um, yeah sort of meandering along a, a fence or a, a trellis what have I hit there I've done something and it just does not want to doesn't want to pass through there what did we get tied on not sure let's try somewhere else Mm, I'm not sure what's happening here. Ah, it's the... So, sometimes you'll find amongst a set of um, beads, you'll find one that just does not want to pass over your needle head. And that's why that one wasn't actually... The thread wasn't pulling through because it was caught still on the bead. So hopefully I don't pick up that same bead again because I didn't actually see where I carelessly tossed that one. Let's go again. Oh yeah, they're looking nice now. They're sort of looking a bit more luminescent now. There's a couple of them. You always need to keep going for a few things before you make a judgment on whether something's to your satisfaction. Sometimes you just need that sort of massing, massing of things to know whether you're going to like it or not. So happy I played around with that wire though. I really love that little rhubarb. Um, I might just put another 
lemon in the middle. down glue and put one up the top too oops there's one there already maybe I'll put it over where can I get it to go there so I'm not sure how far back I'm gonna go in the garden um, with the vegetable garden I probably we'll keep going all the way back I'm thinking turnips um, white turnips in the next garden bed up as a nice contrast and again I might do them similar to the way I did the the beetroots with the little knots as the leaves or actually no turnips probably more have a little tuft like a like a carrot I'll just have to see how wide the beads are because sometimes passing the thread up through them can be a bit tricky if it's a particularly skinny inside of the bead so I'll have to have a bit of a play and work out that's going to be easiest okay so I think that can be our last last lemon last lemon on the tree there we go let's tie our thread off so you can see there's some very dense stitching where I was doing that first patch of kale and cauliflower and remit Romanesco. Sometimes I can't get my words out. Does anyone else find that when you're making videos? The words just disappear sometimes. Okay. Right. So, did we want to do how are we going for time 52 minutes okay I reckon we'll do our olive tree what I'm thinking is this color for our olives tree because you get those leaves that have that almost greeny gray color so I thought that could be kind of cool but maybe we'll do the olive tree the olive tree down here yeah oh no actually I think we'll do the olive tree up there no, we'll do olive tree in the middle and then we'll do plum tree down here I think Although plums are a summer fruit. Hmm. Wondering, wondering, wondering. But I reckon I could still get away with it. Maybe there's some that have been left on the tree. Well, no, hang on. Plums. When do we get plums? Now I'm doubting myself. Mum usually gives me plums, but... Hmm. Mum's got a big plum tree, and I'm just trying to think when I get that big glut of of those can't actually think and I suppose we do actually also need to do our stem of our tree also got a piece of brown here I can use use some of that Of threading. Okay, so oops, they just came flying down. So this tree I think went over to, I think actually maybe this tree is actually just down from here. I'll have to check back to the, the picture to see exactly how, how big the trunk of that one is meant to be. Oops, get a bit higher up. Oops, not there. Come on. I did want it to be slightly further down, but that's okay. rhubarb out of the way as much as I love you you have to get out of the way right now because I've got to get a trunk stitched down and I don't want to stitch my rhubarb down who else talks to their pieces of embroidery as they're working on it or is it just me 
I know Corinne makes stories up about hers as she's going, about her little characters in hers, so I love hearing her little stories about the French garden and the, the beekeeper and fresh flower seller. I'm really enjoying Leanne's um, videos when she makes hers as well. I think she said she was having some bursts of inspiration around her veggie garden, so I'll have to be checking and seeing if there's a, a new video to watch from her. And hopefully, yeah, others as well. There's such a lovely little yeah group of YouTube stitches. And if you're working on the Journal of Stitchery and you want to make a video, definitely um, Give me a link below and I'll come and come and check it out. Just making a little stem for our little lemon tree. So I think that, that'll be fine. It's an overload lemon tree with a little a little trunk. So we're 56 minutes, I think I'd probably better better call it a day very shortly because I think I've probably kept you for long enough. I can't have you here for, for hours on end, although I know some people watch um, these sorts of videos with um, the fast, well not fast forward, they put it on sort of, yeah, like a higher speed playback. So I am going to have to capture that little, that little loop um, that has come off um, one of my bits of my rhubarb but I'll just do that with a needle and, and bring that under so I'm going to work on off camera and I'll share some some photos I'm going to work on this olive tree over here and this plum tree and I'll put the video of um yeah where I get to at the start of um the video before I post it so it'll be the sort of cover cover image of the video and I'll also post a picture in the Facebook group and as I mentioned, I'm thinking of using these little white beads to do um, some turnips in these beds. And then I think I might then in the green beds go back to doing some cabbages using different green, green beads. And I might even then um, reintroduce another cabbage in a um, purple because the beads will be like looking at these things that in the in the distance so that's what I was thinking or I could use smaller French knots than I've used here just use less bits of thread and just do less wraps of the, the needle so I hope you like the piece I'm happy with how it's um, coming along it's fun just working step by step I'll probably also do something around the, the base here I was actually thinking I might do some little um, spring onions or maybe leeks because I think my spring onions do actually carry on through winter but I know leeks are definitely more of a sort of autumny winter thing but they might look more like spring onions because I might do smaller little ones standing up a bit like the tops of the the tops of the carrots there anyway I'm having such a ball with this um, so thank you Rachel and Sarah for the the prompts and for the whole challenge and thank you to the lovely community of yeah just really supportive stitchers who make up the Facebook group but also those of you here on Facebook on not on Facebook on YouTube so have a lovely weekend folks um, I probably won't be posting another one of these videos this weekend I've got a few other bits and pieces but yeah it might be a couple of days until I get another post video posted I think I'm getting weary with my words, so I'm going to sign off. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.